Dave was really smart. I mean, Phi Beta Kappa, Joyce, and Scholar, big time Manhattan lawyer, negotiating offshore mergers and acquisitions, smart. Tim is six feet two inches tall and he weighs 210 pounds. And he was an all state prep school and college wrestler, which automatically makes him way smarter than me. He was only five feet nine inches tall and I weigh 140 pounds. <laughs> Intellectual capacity is no contest between Tim and me, believe me. About a year and a half ago, our mother died at age 90, and for some godforsaken reason, Tim and Dave and yours truly, the three co-executives of her will. <laughs> I don't have to tell you who recused himself immediately from that legal obligation so that his two brothers could actually round up her estate, put it through probate, talk to all the lawyers and realtors involved with selling her house, tie it all up neatly in six weeks max, and walk out of the bank pushing wheelbarrows full of cash. <laughs>
living room in the lotus position, very quiet, with a smile on his face, meditating. I would tiptoe back and forth in the house, intent on not disturbing him. He would sit on the floor at the end of my living room, under the picture window, in a meditating trance, with this serene smile on his face. I really loved that serene smile. Dave worked in the Aspen bookstore for a while, and he would send me boxes of books, all the latest novels and other works, and philosophy, you name it. Same deal when he moved to Washington, D.C. We exchanged so much information about books, authors, movies. He sent me books as diverse as animal architecture and Robertson Davies' Fifth Business. And later in life, one of the books he sent to me was a volume that I really cherish, a beautiful leather-bound column, a beautiful leather-bound volume of complete works of Garcia Lorca in Spanish. All of his poems, plays, all of his writings, all his drawings also. Dave's dedication to me in that book is, to John, with love in all languages, Dave. Hmm. I wrote him many long letters during the Vietnam War, urging him to reject the army, file for CO, and all of that. And he actually had the courage to do it. And back then I write him long letters about problems I was having writing a novel. And we went back and forth about all those things. He was such an articulate comrade in the literary and philosophical worlds even when very young. I remember Dave and Tim and I surfing together in the big ocean waves at Jones Beach on Long Island when we were kids. And I remember foining for flounders with Dave and Tim in Mauritius Bay, swimming along with our snorkels and frog feet and our foins. And I remember playing music with Dave and singing songs together. When I was 15 in 1955, I got into folk music and I bought a guitar and I started playing Weaver's Tunes and Lead Belly and Josh Frank Blues and Elizabethan Ballads. I learned a lot of tunes from my own father growing up. He was also David Gelson Nichols. And Dad played guitar and sang wonderful songs to us by Jimmy Crack Corn and Frankie and Johnny and little Joe the Wrangler. When Dave reached 13 or 14, he picked up a guitar and we shared folk music and blues and all sorts of tunes together. He became great on the guitar. In the past weeks, I've been going through the many letters we exchanged over the years, and I came across this letter he sent to me. It was undated, but I think it was around 1962 when I was living in Spain, and he was a freshman or sophomore at St. Albans in Washington, D.C. Apparently, I had sent him some records, and he was responding. Dear John, Merci, bo, 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 good daddy. My daddy's good. I played him all last night. I was so inspired that today I went out and bought a big book songs of North America. It has two John Henrys, both different than Josh White's, and a Franklin County. It also has the history and all that jazz. It has a talking blues, a talking gospel blues, a good morning blues. I mean, it's packed full of songs, about 300. There's one John Bias and Bob Gibson duet called We Are Crossing the Jordan 
and asked them unto Dave, and they Dave spruced it up with a super fast version of the Kingston Trio record, and he played that version superbly. Part of the chorus to Dave's Frankie and Johnny goes, I'm going away, I'm gonna stay, I ain't ever coming home. You're gonna miss me, honey, Dave says, says, come. When the winter winds begin to blow, and the ground is covered up, and when you think of that day, you're gonna wish me back, your loving man. You're gonna miss me, honey, in the days they say is to come. And this is true with love in all the languages I know. I'm really gonna miss my brother in the days they say is to come. Thank you.